Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we're going to look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Black Mold. This is a new one from Terrible Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play, and is a cooperative, competitive kind of game depending upon what you're looking for. At the end of the day, it is going to mainly be competitive, as at the end of the game, there are going to be a number of different factors that will determine the winner. The first is any player that exits the prison, whoever has the most nugs, which is the currency in the game, will be the winner of the game. Now, if all or the players that do escape all tie, then they will win together. Now, if you happen to be turned into a fungal thrall, then it is the last player standing in a way at where you want to try to eliminate all of the other prisoners or turn them into thralls themselves. In that situation, then you would win the game as well. Otherwise, there is going to be some backstabbing as you can take items from other players and attack them and deal damage to them, making them less effective. But also early on, you might want to work together, especially if fungal thralls come out as they are nasty customers and you want to try to take them down as quickly as possible so they don't stop you from making your way through the prison and trying to escape through that prison and make your way up through the levels. So in this one, the other really interesting thing and one uh, statement I never thought I would say is that this game might actually be healthy for you. What do you mean by that? So with this game, there's a really interesting mechanic within it, which is that during your turn, there's going to be a point in your turn where you're going to have to hold your breath. And from that point on, you're going to take the rest of your turn trying to do all kinds of different things while holding your breath. At whatever point in time you either choose to end or have to exhale, that is going to be the end of your turn. And why do you say that that is healthy? So it is proven that holding your breath is it will help you build up your lungs and improve their capacity. And over time, you will actually be able to hold your breath longer. One of the things that divers and swimmers and all that use. So it is an interesting thing and one that I would I never thought I would say about a board game, but that is a proven fact. And this is a really interesting twist on how that can potentially work within a board game. Now, for those of you that have breathing problems or just to choose to or cannot do that, there is also going to be a sand timer included, so you can still enjoy the game and have a great time with it. And you can mix and match this. Some players can choose to hold their breath, you others can use a sand timer, or you can shift over to the sand timer completely. It is totally up to you as the players. So another really weird, interesting, little quirky thing within the game itself, but is a lot of fun. And it definitely introduces some really hilarious moments as players desperately try to hold on for those last couple seconds to be able to finish off the rest of their action that they're taking or whatnot before they have to, to take a breath. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the main features of the game and then also show you a sample turn to give you a good idea how this one plays and help you and help you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, also give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff. Now, I do want to point out that all the materials that I'm working with here are prototype materials that are subject to change and will look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. Moving over to the players, each player is going to choose one of the characters that they want to play as throughout the game. And these characters have spent years and years in prison and their minds are almost at their breaking points. So they don't have names anymore. They simply go by their colors. So for example, with this character here, he is simply known as Gray. And there'll be a number of different characters included in the game. Each one of them will have their own dashboard that is going to have a breakdown of their different health and their different icons on there. And each one will be a little bit different. Now throughout the game, players are going to take damage whether it is from physical damage, such as malice, or from spores. And they're going to be placing tokens in here, filling up these spaces around the player board clockwise. Now you'll notice some of these spaces have icons on them. And each time a token is placed in one of these, it's going to affect the character in different ways. For example, with the first one here, we have a wit icon. So when that icon is, is filled up, you're going to place a confusion card in your decision deck. And you'll have all kinds of different effects on these. Now, once a player's board is completely filled up, the spaces in the center of the board, based on how they're filled up, whether they're from malice or spores, will dictate what happens to that player. With sometimes with the malice, that player simply will die. And other times, if it's mainly fungus, then that player's card will be flipped over and that player will become a thrall, a fungal thrall for the rest of the game, where they're going to focus on trying to hunt down and eliminate the other players. 
Now, from there, each player is also going to have a custom deck of decision cards, and you're going to be using these as you traverse throughout the different dungeons and trying to use these cards. Initially, this deck is going to simply have the decision cards with the different connections in them, but again, throughout the game, the player will add confusion cards, which are basically like dud cards that are useless to the player and will slow them down. Now, as a player has to transverse through the different stages or different areas of a dungeon, they're going to have to place out a number of these cards based on the requirements of that space and then have them connect into one sequence. So, for example, with this one here, I can turn this around and now, whoop, not that way. Let's put that back and flip this one around. Now with this one here, now this is going to connect and make a sequence. And as long as I have a connected sequence, then I have completed my task. But there'll be plenty of different cards in this deck, such as this card here that might not line up, or with other cards that are going to be in that deck that will cause you to have to discard those cards and reveal new cards. And if you ever run out of cards in your deck, then you simply have failed in that sequence and will not be able to take the action that you wanted to take. Now each character is also going to come with contraband, which is going to be a unique item for that character. Now you can also mix and match these, and each one of these will give that character a special ability. And there's going to be a whole collection of these as well, such as Bone Dice, or the Cursed Mirror, the Haunted Locket, the Expired Pill Bottle, and other pieces of contraband. Now, throughout the game, players are also going to be able to gain items that are going to help them trying to escape the dungeon. And these are going to range in all kinds of different things, such as flint or nugs that you can use or that are currency. And the player that has the most of these at the end of the game, if they're able to escape, will be the winner. You'll also have items like cloth or stones and bone that you can create other items with that you can take craft actions and build different things such as a shiv or a torch that you can actually light and have a lit torch and other items you'll be able to craft as well. An optional feature of the game is the plot deck, and you can choose to add this deck if you want to add a little bit more of a narrative to your games. With the plot deck, it is going to be comprised of three different types of cards. You'll have the thrall cards that when you reveal one of these, you're going to have to place a thrall in your space and then it'll immediately attack you. You'll have plot cards that you'll read through and carry out the instructions on the card. And then you'll have madness cards. With these first two cards, they're also going to trigger the ex exile phase where you're going to have to exhale and then carry out the abilities on these cards where the madness cards will let you continue playing. Now, with a cool feature of these cards is that some of them will have different abilities on them that you'll be able to carry out if you read them. Now, keep in mind that you are holding your breath during this or the timer is ticking by, so you, don't, you won't be able to spend too much time on this unless you really want to, and not all cards will have something you can carry out. But for example, with this one, you can draw one item with this. So that's really interesting that they have little hidden messages in them that you can potentially find. And each time a new area is revealed for the first time, you'll draw one of these plot cards and carry out the effects of that card. Moving over to the enemies, beyond just players being enemies of other players, you're also going to have the fungal thralls. And these are nasty customers that can pop up throughout the different areas of the dungeon at a moment's notice. And there's going to be a number of different ways that they can show up, such as having certain results on the dice, or different cards in the item deck will trigger these. Or if you're using the plot deck, there'll be cards, as you're going to see in there, that will bring them about as well. And whenever one of these little guys pops up, they are going to attack any player that is in their space and then we'll constantly move around trying to get into a player's space to attack them and they can deal considerable damage. On top of that, they can also heal in under certain circumstances as they are all part of the black mold. Next, let's look at the different dungeon tiles you're going to be making your way through throughout the game. So you're going to start off in the starting location and then make your way through the dungeon. Each time moving off of a tile, you'll reveal a new tile. And there's going to be a whole collection of different tiles you're going to be running into throughout the game, such as moldy areas that'll let you move through them by, by having to meet a, trans, a traverse action or being able to search them. And if you can get enough on the search, then you'll be able to find an item in these areas. 
But if you stay in these areas at the end of your turn, you're going to take spore damage from them. Other areas such as dead ends or the germinating areas are really going to cause havoc for players and are hard to get out of. Then you'll have safe areas are the only areas in the game where you'll really be able to take advantage of things and won't have to worry about taking as much damage from spores in that. And the overall end result is trying to escape the dungeon through the final exit at the end of the stack. All right, and the last thing I want to do is take you through a sample turn to give you a good idea how this one plays. Before getting into that, I do want to point out one other little thing, though. The game itself is going to come with a looming tray that is going to be nested within the main box. And this tray is going to have an organizer in it that will have all the different components you're going to be using during your turn. And this whole little box can be passed from player to player so that they can take their turn and have access to all the different components that they'll need during their turn, which is a really cool little thing. You even have a spot for a dice tray and all that. Now, this tray is still in development and is going to look a little bit different than the one that I have here and all the different things is, are going to work perfectly for the different components that you have. Now for this video, I'm not going to be using this as I want to be able to show you all the different things spread out a little bit more, but it is a really cool little thing that they've included with this. So from there, let's move into the game itself. So first off, to start the game, you're going to read the top card of the, the prison that you've constructed, and then you'll carry out the different things. This will be kind of helping to set the mood. So with this one, you have been chained up in this cave for weeks, for months, and you're hungry. Suddenly, a thought-to-be-dead prisoner slips out of their confines and releases you before they flee. They unlatch the door, ushering in a gust of black particles that fill their lungs. A single sharp cough and a muttered scream, and the prisoner collapses. Beyond the threshold, a stairwell spirals up from the corridors above, just beyond the light of a flickering torch, and you can see every surface is coated in a rippling fungal blackness. Shrouded in the poison ephilim, the, uh, the torchlight fades away into the ribbon of smoke, and the fog creeps towards you. Flip this card over to begin. All right, so this is going to be our starting point. And so each of our prisoners will place their meeple in there, and then we're ready to begin the game, starting with whichever player has been selected to start or be the starting player. And normally this is handed by a dice roll for the players. But for this game, I'm going to have the uh, bone player be the starting player or the wood player. From there, a player's turn is going to be broken down into a few steps. At the beginning of their turn, they're going to handle if they want to heal, and then they can also, if they're in the same space as other prisoners, they can choose to carry out a number of different actions, including being able to trade with that prisoner or bargain with them or threaten them and attack them or try to bargain with them to attack other prisoners during their turns and a number of different things. Now, this is a prisoner's agreement. There are no rules that set this in place where you have to meet the requirements of whatever you agree to. You can, of course, break them, bluff, backstab however you want to play and do however you want to do it so you never quite know what you can do and what you can trust within your different opponents so be careful what kind of bargains you you make as you might think that is something is solid and all of a sudden that player decides nope they're going to take your item anyways and then they're going to attack you so be on your guard as you never know what prisoners will do to escape the prison they're in from there, once you are done with all of that stuff, then you're ready to move into the next part of your turn. During this step, if you've chosen to hold your breath, this is the point where you're going to inhale and then hold your breath to take out the rest of your turn until you choose to exhale. Or if you've chosen to use the sand timer, this is the point where you're going to flip that over. At that point, which I'm not going to do as I want to be able to explain all the different things to you that you can do, at this point, then we're going to carry on. So as you get into it, the sand timer is going to be going or you're going to be holding your breath trying to carry out as many of the actions as you're able to until either the sand timer runs out or you decide to exhale. Now, if you've chosen to use the plot cards, there are also going to be plot cards that will end your turn as well. So as we get into that, I'll show you how that works. So from here, you have a number of different options as a player. You can move on and traverse into the dungeon. And so let's go ahead and start with that. So we're going to go ahead and reveal a new card. And then as you reveal a card, there's some of the cards are going to have different exit points. So you're going to line that up with one of the points you're trying to lead into. And then you'll move your character into there. From there, then you have a, a number of different options depending upon the location you go to. For example, this location, I can 
continue traversing to a new location, but I have to do a conscious check and get five cards lined up as I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And then other locations will have a second number on there that allows you to search that location and try to find an item. And again, you're going to continue doing this and each time you reveal a new location, you're also going to reveal a plot card. Again, if you've chosen to use the plot card deck. So with this one, I have a Madness card. So again, with the Madness cards, I can look at this and see if there's any different wording on here that might give me a benefit. But again, I'm holding my breath, so I don't want to take too much time. And so I'm going to go ahead and discard that and that lets me carry on with my turn. So from there, let's go ahead and start off by looking at the search action. So in order to carry this out, you're going to look and gather up your dice. You get two dice always, which are the red colored dice that are simply there as a reminder. And then you're going to look on your card and see how many of the different grit that you have on there that are, have not been covered up yet. So with my player here, I have four additional grit. So I'm going to get to roll six dice for this test. During the test, as I roll, each time I roll a grit, I'm going to lock it. And each time I roll a spore, I'm going to take a spore token and place it off to the side that I'll start filling in my board with, starting at the top and working my way around. And then as the game goes on, I might start filling up some of these spaces that have the icons, which will loot, uh, decrease my effectiveness throughout the rest of the game. From there, I'm going to gather up the rest of the dice and continue rolling until I meet the requirements of that, or I decide that I just don't want to push it anymore. All right, so I have a couple of grit here. Did very well on this one, and no spores. And there's a couple more, but I did get a spore in this with this one here. And so I'll just go ahead and plug that in there. And then I have completed that search action. So then I get to draw the top item card and I found some flint. So I'll go ahead and add that to my area from there. So at this point, let's go ahead and look at the next type of action, which would be the traverse action to move on to the next tile. So in this situation, I need a five. So I'm going to reveal cards from my consciousness deck. And each one of these cards, again, is going to have the different synapses that are gonna connect that I'm going to try to connect uh, throughout this phase here. Let me slide this over. And again, with this one, I can only use one hand to manipulate these throughout the turn. And I have to try to get these all lined up. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can shift this one over here. And with that, it lines up there. So once I have that connection, great, I can go ahead and move. Now, if for whatever reason I, can, I have a card that doesn't line up, I can discard that and draw a new one. But a couple of important things with this, if you run out of cards in your deck, you are not able to continue on. And at the end of this, you're going to simply discard all these cards to this card pile, depleting cards from your deck as you won't shuffle those back in until the end of your turn during after the exhaust step. So I was successful in this. So at this point then I'm gonna reveal a new card and this one is a dead end. And some of these cards won't line up really well and some of them will be kind of cockeyed and screwy. So depending upon what you find, that's just kind of the madness that you're kind of running into as well. And again, with this one with a dead end, I, I, will, I cannot go any farther. And so I'll have to make my way back out and try to find a different location or different way out. And if this is the only way, like with this situation here where this is the only spot, once a character moves out of here, then this location will be discarded and a new one will come out. But again, when I'm in here, I have to be able to traverse back into this other location. And if you end your turn in a location that is not safe, such as these locations, you will also take spore damage from them. And depending upon the locations, some of them can be really nasty with that. So again, with this one, since I revealed a new card, then I will reveal a card, and now this one is a plot card, so this will trigger the exhaust step of this turn, and this will end my turn, and I'm going to go ahead and read through this card, and then carry out any action that is listed on it, or resolve any effects that are on there as well. So now that I've covered that, there's a couple of additional things I like to cover. The first is combat. So when characters are in the same space or if you're going up against a thrall, you can engage in combat and fight those, the, the character or the thrall. So let's look at an example of this. Let's go ahead and say that Wood is going to attack Silver. So first off, we have to calculate Wood's attack power, which is going to be his grit plus fit. So each icon that's showing, we'll count up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you would also add any items that he has equipped that could add additional attack power to that. But at this point, we have seven attack power. From there, then we're gonna come over to Silver and calculate her defensive power, which is going to be the wit plus grit. 
So in order to calculate that, we're going to count up one, two, three, four, five, six. So her, she has six to his seven. So she is going to lose by one. And again, if you had, if she had any items, she could calculate that at this point as well. So each point of damage that you take, you're going to take a token and then have the malice side up, which is the fist. From there, the winning player can also choose either an item that is face down or an item, item that is also face up that that player has equipped already to gain for themselves. So in this way, players can start taking different things from other players, such as the coins and all kinds of different things that will help them in the long run. So combat is a very effective way if somebody has some really nice items or other things that you want that they don't want to give you. And so you can resort to violence to take some of that stuff from that player. From there, then, all, again, at the end of your turn, you're also going to shuffle in all of your cards back into your deck and get ready for your next round. And then it'll move on to the next player. And again, this is going to continue with player or player after player until the end game conditions are met or all the players have been eliminated. So I hope that gives you a good idea how the game plays and helps you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creator would love to hear from you and is more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.